solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. In 1955, when a young John Dingle took the oath of office from the great Speaker of the House, Sam Rayburn, he promised to serve the people of Michigan. That was during the 84th Congress. Ike, Dwight David Eisenhower, was then the president. And during the time that Congressman Dingle has been fulfilling his promise that he made on that day, he has also served with Presidents Kennedy, Johnson, Nixon, Ford, Carter, Reagan, Clinton, and both Bushes. During that time, he has seen a cure for polio, seen Americans walk on the moon, witnessed the assassinations of three of America's most influential leaders. He has seen the Berlin Wall tumble. He's seen telephone service go from party lines to blackberries. Seen Detroit flourish as the home to the most successful, powerful manufacturing industry in the world. Witnessed a riot in his home state. Saw television grow from just three stations, telecasting in black and white, to an international communication service with dozens of options from which to choose. Most, by the way, in high definition. It is no wonder why his colleagues call John Dingle the Dean of the House. Good evening, everybody. Bill Bonds. Boy, it's been a while since we've talked like this, one on the two, but it feels pretty good. Tonight, we're gonna to be taking a look at just part of the lifetime of one of our nation's most trusted public servants. I say part of the lifetime because after 50 years in the U.S. House of Representatives, this man is not done yet. On December 13th, it'll be his 50th anniversary on Capitol Hill, and we'll find him the third longest serving member of the House of Representatives in the history of the U.S. Congress. 50 years. As a freshman congressman, you find out that you're really not a powerhouse member your first year. When he began in 1955, John Deagle had four staffers and four typewriters, and in spite of limited resources, he quickly found his way into committee work on the Merchant Marine and Fisheries Committee. Not quite as important as he was hoping for right off the bat, but he worked hard and he was responsible for some important legislation that helped Michiganders in regard to fish and wildlife. He moved from the Public Works Committee through Interstate and Foreign Commerce Committee to chairman of several important committees, like the very powerful and important Committee on Energy and Commerce. Even the Republicans called him Mr. Chairman. Along the way, John Dingell influenced very important legislation, for instance, the Clean Air Act, the Endangered Species Act, the Children's Health Care Act. He tackled corporate accountability before it was cool to do that. And he was kind of the watchdog over the breakup of AT&T, and he continues to fight for the Patients' Bill of Rights. He is the leading voice in Congress for making health care affordable and accessible for every American. The term powerful congressman is regularly and justifiably attached to his name. In one of the most unusual transitions in all of congressional history, John Dingell took over for his dad, who died in office, and son John took the seat that his father had used for 23 years. His father taught the son a deep commitment to social justice and a strong belief that leaders have a responsibility to protect those who struggle to protect themselves. Those lessons have manifested themselves in the more than 1,500 pieces of legislation that John Dingell has been responsible for so far. John Dingell was an early leader for the civil rights, beginning with the Civil Rights Act in 1957. His passion for the out of doors and the environment evidenced by his proclamation of the 1970s being the decade of the environment, and he wrote or he co-authored every major environmental law over the last half century. 
He has danced on a razor blade his entire career, serving both the needs of the auto industry while protecting the labor force and union members. He took a leadership role in 1965 in passing Medicare, and he was awarded the honor of presiding over the House during that final historic vote. The gavel that he used on that day remains in his office. He has a reputation of being tough, tough but fair, and I guess that's why some call him the bear. Matter of fact, he is one of the few lawmakers who can be effective even if his party is in the minority, and that's because he gets respect on both sides of the aisle. The best schedule lying before you is that which is here, and you save your consumers and your constituents about $350 a car over the life of the vehicle by voting for this amendment with no... Washington, D.C., Capitol Hill. Washington, D.C. is a city of parties, Democrats, Republicans, and Democrats and Republicans love big parties. There was a big one here not long ago. It was a black tie affair, a big bash. Democrat John Dingell was the person honored, and one of the people honoring him was a Republican vice president of these United States. I guess John wanted me here to add a little charisma to the program. <laughs> Even when we've disagreed, John has always been someone I respected. He's a patriot, a tremendously hard worker, a true master in the business of legislating. For 50 years, he's been tireless in his duties, utterly devoted to the people of Michigan. He's unapologetic in standing up for them, for their jobs, for their rights as citizens, and for the way of life that Americans have worked so hard to build. He speaks his mind and looks for common ground. Above all, his word is good. Shake hands with John Dingell, and you've got yourself a deal. John Dingell arrived here at the House of Representatives, Capitol Hill, as a very, very young man, taking his father's seat. One of the first persons he talked to was a crusty, tough, shrewd Texan by the name of Sam Rayburn, the Speaker of the House. Sam pulled him aside and said, son, to get along here, y'all got to go along. John Dingell got along with leaders and people on both sides of that historic aisle. So now I have the honor to have John Dingell as my ranking member, or the ranking member of the Energy and Commerce Committee. And I can't tell you what a joy it is to sit and learn and listen and work with him. Um, we were negotiating the energy bill, the comprehensive energy bill that passed and the president signed in August. And John Dingell, the last four years, had not voted for any of the energy bills. He felt like he was left out of the process. And so when we got ready to try to move a bill this year, I went to him and I said, are you willing to work with me? And he said, yes. And I said, are you willing to vote for the bill? And he said, probably not. And I said, well, why should I work with you if you're not willing to vote for the bill? And he said, well, I'm going to tell you what Lyndon Johnson used to say about that. It's better to have me in the tent urinating out than outside the tent urinating in. <laughs> But in the, in the post-1900 period, I would say John Dingell is the most influential chairman on either side of the aisle to serve in this century. So I consider it a privilege to have him as my friend. Congratulations. I was asked to come here to be living proof that presidents come and presidents go and John Dingell goes on forever. <laughs> John Dingell has taught us the secret of living a full life and staying young. Figure out what you believe in and fight for it. When you lose, don't give up. When you win, raise the bar and rear back and do something else. He never thought it was supposed to be an easy little path. He never asked anybody to guarantee him anything. And he fights just as hard today as he did the first day he came here. That is the secret of staying young. More importantly, it is the secret of a full life. It is a secret of having no regrets. It is a secret of knowing that, sure, he could have made a lot of money doing something else. Sure, he could have done a lot of other things. Yes, he would have fewer battle scars. His life might have even been lengthened, no matter how long he lives after all the battles he's been through, but it would never have been as full. 
John Dangle, you have kept your promise to the people, not just of Michigan, but to the people of America. You have been a good and faithful public servant. You are the dean of the House of Representatives. You showed us all how it should be done. You did it your way. There's only one John Dingle. I doubt we'll ever again see a force in the legislative arena with a committee that claims jurisdiction over anything that moves, burns, or is sold in the United States of America. I'm proud and honored to call him my friend, and the nation is blessed to have him in Congress. It has occurred to me, and it's probably occurred to you, to get elected 25 times over a span of 50 years to the House of Representatives, you've got to make a ton of friends. John Dingell did. A month or so ago, some 3,000 of his supporters showed up in Dearborn to celebrate John's 50th year in the U.S. House, and we were there. John Dingle has always been such a champion of the auto industry and of manufacturing. And uh, it is a very, very difficult time for Michigan in particular, because we have the largest percentage of our state economy tied to manufacturing, in yeah. particular to the automotive industry. That, that's why we feel this struggle. John Dingle, who has been such an ally both of labor and of management is in a tremendous position to exercise leadership in bringing people together as he always has. When John Dingell speaks, whether it's a conference committee with senators and members trying to put together a final piece of legislation or in a subcommittee, members will stop and listen because what he has to say usually contains nuggets of great wisdom and compassion for the issue, and uh, he, he, he certainly embodies the things that most members of Congress would like to be. In his case, he's very proud of who he represents and what their dreams and goals are. He, he really believes in average people having an opportunity, just that average person in America, having a decent job, being able to buy a house, getting their kids through school, having health care. American dream. The American dream. He just genuinely believes in it, and I think he inherited that feeling from his dad. Oh, I, I smiled when I would go to a meeting and John Dingle would get up and say, look, do you know what Social Security has meant to people? And the passion the passion and the knowledge. You know, I, I had to, to try to learn it inside and, and out. John did his homework and he'd get up and just say, I have fought for lots of things. I've won some and lost some, but I'm not gonna lose this one. I stand by Dingle, uh, and Dingle has stood by me. Uh, I started off, I didn't, I didn't have the kind of legacy that he inherited, but he brought me to the table and I benefited from it. And I, I, I owe him a personal debt, which I'm very, very proud to let everybody know that this 50th year is not his last. Nobody agrees with everybody all the time. I think that's safe to say. Republicans don't always agree with Democrats, Democrats, Republicans, husbands and wives. We all know that nobody does it all by themselves. That includes John and Debbie Dingle. Just before I left the house, she said, if you're going to talk to Debbie, ask her if she's ever thought about running for the Congress. Who said to ask My her? wife. Oh, I think that the people of Michigan, the 15th district, have a very good congressman right there right now. Yeah. Been a long trip, hasn't it? It's been a, a wonderful trip. He is a unique man. I had no idea what I was getting into when I married him. Thought I did, but I didn't. And, and I've been very blessed. I've been blessed in so many ways. Uh, in the experiences that we've had, the people we've met, the differences he's made. Could John done it without you? Could he have done it without He you? did it for 25 years without me. 
So the answer to that is yes. Yeah, but the last 25 years, Debbie, we all know he's just soared. I mean, no, you two have been good for each other. We were blessed, you know. We've got we've got a marriage that should never, on paper, have ever worked, and and yet we've somehow been very blessed. We make each other whole. We fill in each other's. It, it, it's I can't. I'm, I have a hard time articulating how lucky.